All right, so the NFL now and Deshaun Watson's legal issues ongoing. Let's revisit beginning in early 2021 with the first of 24 civil lawsuits alleging sexual misconduct were filed against him. One suit was dropped over privacy concerns. Now, in March of this year, a grand jury in Harris County, Texas, declined to indict Watson on any criminal charges. He was traded to the Browns just one week later. Watson met with the NFL investigators for the first time in May. And on June 21st, attorney Tony Busby announcing that 20 of the 24 lawsuits against Watson had been settled. On right, a timeline of a different kind with the Cleveland Brown, Watson's current team, veterans reporting to training camp one month from today and here to break things down, Jeremy Fowler uh, in the building. And can we presume the league will have some sort of decision on Deshaun Watson by then? Yes, because this could be expedited a little bit, Gary, right. because with independent officer Sue L. Robinson hearing this case on Tuesday, as our Adam Schefter reported, that, you know, that signifies that the league has done its investigation pretty much in full. I was told that they've been at this for about 18 months. They feel very good about where things stand. They've done several interviews with some of the plaintiffs. They've talked to Watson. They could still follow up and do some background work, but this is pretty much ready to go. And so uh, you know, the, the appointed officer is a new process. Usually Roger Goodell would handle discipline. Now it's a based on somebody jointly appointed here by the NFL and the NFLPA. So she could take you know, a couple weeks. She could come to a decision pretty soon. Uh, the league felt all along this would be wrapped up before training camp, and it is trending that way. Now, the NFLPA is involved here. They're thinking, hey, if this is going to be a lengthy suspension, they're likely to appeal that process on behalf of the player. Oh, okay, right now, as, of course, a decision looms for Watson and other teams in the league, of course, are getting ready for training camp. The Browns kicking off a month from today, and we'll look at teams in the NFC West. The yeah. rookies report on July 21st with veterans reporting five days after that for the Cardinals and the defending champs, the Rams. They report on the 23rd and to round out the division, the Seahawks and the 49ers both reporting a month from today, July 26th. So let's talk about the 26th. So let's talk about the 49ers. We've talked about them all off season yep, yep. and the two biggest question marks continuing now as we bear down one month away from training yep. camp, the status of Jimmy Garoppolo and Debo Samuel. Can you peel that curtain back a little bit? Yeah, so let's start with Jimmy G. This is a quarterback who is close to throwing a football, which is good news for any team that might need a quarterback is looking in the trade market. I'm told that everything is on schedule coming off that shoulder surgery and that the timeline is still the same. Early July is roughly when he'll probably start throwing. and It will be a ramp-up process. It'll take a few weeks, but the thing is, the trade market hasn't been hot because he just simply needs to pass a physical. He hasn't been able to do that. Once he does, you have teams like Carolina, Seattle that have at least been monitoring the quarterback market. Baker Mayfield, Garoppolo, all those names you've heard. So that could heat up before training camp. Now, Debo Samuel, I'm told status quo is really when he reported to minicamp. That's the last piece of news that we have here, that nothing else significant has happened behind the scenes between Samuel and the 49ers. In fact, he hasn't officially rescinded his trade request as far as I've heard, but the 49ers are still hopeful that they can mend this relationship come to a long-term agreement at some point. It could be closer to training camp or around then, but they'll chip away at this. And, and really, the trade market has sizzled. Around draft time was the best time to do that. Now there really hasn't been a lot of buzz or traction. Listen, Debo wants to get paid. He's going to get paid. Is it imminent? I don't know. We'll bring back Jeremy Fowler when it is. He's joining us this morning on Center. Thanks, Jay Bone. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Sports Center AM Sunday playlist, a little variety of genres. How about a no, 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 no? We're going to show you how it was even better for the Astros than Houston's own Destiny's Child. Now some country, one Mississippi is in one more win for the Ole Miss Rebels in Omaha to be crowned the champions of the College World Series. How about a little rap, Big Willie style? For new coach Mike McDaniel, his welcome to Miami will include a whole remix of the Dolphins' offense. Bienvenido a la end zone. But before we do that... The pocket, the score he did for Team KC Auto Paint. Somebody give that boy a whammy. Keep dog coaching him up. That's a top play. Here come, right. ten, here come ten more. All right, we're going to be, go back to the WNBA. We got the Sparks and the Storm, and you know Brittany Sykes. She's known for her defense, but you better recognize her offense. One second left for Sykes. There, yeah, yeah. Buzzer beater, and the Sparks beat the Storm. That's a shocker. Yeah, number nine, Pirates and Rays. Taylor Walls at the plate. It's not about him. It's about Michael Chavis. Yeah, yeah, he caught it. You can see it right there. There's the proof. It's in the glove. Never touch the ground. More from this game coming up.
Market 8, dude. Alexander Ovechkin would rather be skating for the Stanley Cup, but in the meantime, he's going to play soccer. Do you wonder if, he, if he's watching the Stanley Cup, or do you just like, I can't watch it? Oh, look at that in the back of the net. Ovechkin deciding to retire from the Capitals and become a professional soccer. Oh, you're going to call no, I made that up. I made that up. <laughs> More soccer. Jose Paradella with a back heel to Brian Romero, who finishes bottom right corner. Fancy assist for the goal. And River Plate beat Lanus 2-1. to one. This is Athletes Unlimited softball. Team Zirkle against Team Fisher. And that's Gwen Svekis. And that's Lily, Lily Piper. Is that Lily Piper? It Making is. that catch? Nice catch. Number five, Pirates and Rays. Luke Rayleigh pops up in the foul territory. Jack Zawinski covers foul territory and uh, got to know a fan. Uh, much more so than that fan might have liked to know him. Uh, the Pirates go down 6-5, but Sawinski, a man outstanding in his field. At four, the A's and the Royals. Tony Kemp. You know what he had for pregame? What? Ops. More from this game later. U.S. Senior Open, Tim Petrovic. Now he's got a long putt here for par. Hit it a little hard. <laughs> okay? Now look at this. Stop it. Now, I don't know if he meant to do this, but he's a professional, and I don't doubt that he maybe he did. Wow. Got the roll back. Wow. Saves par, and he's four over on the day. That's three. That means two and one better be something else. Bobby Witt. Oh. Wow. Did you say it? Wow. Did you say it, Sam? Well, go ahead. Jetarian. <laughs> <laughs> and number one, Tigers and Diamondbacks. You're going hot corner. Uh, Tigers and Diamondbacks. Buddy Kennedy, Buddy Kennedy with a line of gap. He's got a new one, by the way. Does he? Yeah, I was watching. Riley Green, laying out for the kid. Look at that. That is fantastic and worthy of number one. Tigers win and Green's number one. With so much drama in the NL East, it's kind of hard losing MVPs. Losing Bryce Harper to a thumb while the Braves are locked in in a late battle against the Dodgers. We'll run it back. One plus one plus one equals zero. What? How the Astros pulled off those weird mathematics to blank the Yankees in the Bronx. I was told there would be no math. And the latest on Deshaun Watson as the NFL prepares to potentially hand down discipline on the Browns quarterback in SportsCenter AM on a Sunday. <laughs> Bombino. They do not. Mm -hmm. The clock system, they sure do. Okay. Probably caffeinated <laughs> on Sports Center AM. Gary Streisky, Randy Scott alongside on a Sunday morning. We have a star going against his former team in Atlanta, and no, it's not Freddie Freeman, but we start with a bad break elsewhere in the NL East. Yeah, a left thumb going to keep Bryce Harper left out of the Phillies lineup for the foreseeable future. Let's head to San Diego. Randy calls it what? America's finest city. I knew it. It's a tough break. For the Phillies, Bryce Harper would not be fine in the top of the fourth, facing Blake Snell, 97 mile per hour. Oh, man. Ouch. You heard the broadcast there, Don Orsello and Mudcat saying, oh, oh man. Boy, oh, boy. Takes the fastball right off of the left thumb, inches away from his face. Gripping the left thumb is Bryce deep Harper. Deep He's deep Harper is obviously there. upset, okay. adrenaline running through his body. Eventually, he would tell Blake Snell, hey, I knew it wasn't intentional. Blake He's Snell saying, you know it wasn't. These guys have been playing like against thumb. each other since they were 10 years old. Inches away from Bryce Harper's face. After the game, he actually said, I kind of wish it would have hit me in the face. I can take 98 to the face. I can't take 97 to the thumb in reference to being hit in the face. Last year, Harper out indefinitely. The Phillies are calling it a fractured left thumb. The game would need to go on. Top of the fifth, JT Real Muto loves playing at Petco Park. Has a home run in three of his last four games in San Diego. And just like that, the Phillies with a 1-0 lead. And then the Kyle Waltman, Kyle Schwarber, his OBP sitting at about a million right now. His on-base streak extends to a league-best 29 games. Phillies win 4-2. Harper after the game, giving this injury two thumbs down. Um, no, I mean, I've never had a hand injury like this. Never broken anything in my life. Um, 
group, so this is new to me. So I'm just gonna go day by day and see kind of where we're at, see the specialists in Philly. And if I need to see another specialist somewhere, then I will. Kind of wish it would have hit me in the face. I mean, I don't break bones in my face, so. <laughs> I mean, I can take 98 to the face, but I can't take 97 to the thumb, so. Um, yeah, I kind of was in protection mode a little bit, um, trying to get my hand up there and not let it hit me again. Um, it's just, it's a bummer. We've already talked, so uh, he knows how I feel. Obviously, I felt terrible hitting him. Uh, I just, I don't do that, and he knows that. So we've talked, we've handled it. Uh, it was never anything. It's just emotional. He plays with a lot of passion, and I can understand why he'd be upset. So I'm just as upset as he is. I hit him. I, I don't hit people. And just hope he recovers quickly and gets back out there and continue to compete. Remember, Harper also playing with a small tear in his UCL in his right elbow since mid-April, and he's been mashing. Now, if he does miss significant time, it's going to be a monster hit for the Philly offense. Rice ranking near the top of almost every major offensive power category this season. Was also slugging almost 600 at the time of the injury. Only Paul Goldschmidt was ahead of him in the National League. Told you at the top of the show about drama in the NL East. We had late inning drama as the Braves hosting the Dodgers. And there's Freddie Freeman meeting with former Brave Chipper Jones. Remember, Chipper rescued him during the ice storm in 2014. Now Chipper's hair is snow white. And speaking of hair, bottom three, it's Dansby Swanson. The man, the myth, the flow, the home run. 13 of them on the season, seven in June. Leads all shortstops and batting average home runs in RBI this month. To the seventh, Dodgers, though trailing the Braves and Freddie Freeman's up bases loaded two outs after Max Fried is out after six and two thirds and nine K's Will Smith is on and oh speaking of K's got him Freeman down on strike struck out thrice had one hit Dodgers still trailing three two top eight same score different Will Smith this one for the Dodgers gone first pitch he sees his 11th of the year his pursuit of happiness over the left field wall for that Will Smith we're all square at threes bottom eight it's Marcelo Zuna that admits that he struggled to get his timing back this season and said this swing, this connect, in this moment felt amazing. 5-3, Braves have a lead thanks to his 14 on the season. Same score, top nine. Hey, remember me, Kenley Jansen, longtime Dodgers closer. His first year in Atlanta. He's going strong, quite strong, especially with a strike zone like that. Got Cody Bellinger. This is a skosh generish from C.B. Buckner. That's amazing. Cup, cup and a half outside. Dave Roberts, nonplussed. Next batter, Max Muncy. Muncy, don't blame this on the strike zone. He's chasing upstairs. Cutter, Braves and out away. Trey Turner, he has swung a good stick against Atlanta, but man, Jansen throwing frisbees. Buttons up his 20th save on the season. Gets one against his former team. In so doing, Braves are 19 and.